Hi, I'm Brett St. Clair with the Main Street Project and welcome to another edition of the Main Street Minute. With me today is City Engineer Ed Roberge and we're going to be talking today about some of the um, sort of features of the new Main Street uh, including the handicapped parking, um, the parking in general and lane configuration of the street. Um, Ed, uh, how many parking spaces in the new Main Street project are going to be handicapped accessible? The total area, our work area, we say from say Loudon Road Center Street all the way down to Concord Street, there's 13 handicapped spaces of, of different variety within the project area. And how many did we have in that area under the old uh, kind of Main Street parking configuration? Yeah, we only had five in that area before. And can you explain to us um, basically sort of how these uh, handicapped um, spaces work and how they're sort of uh, blended into our streetscape? Yeah, like you'll see we have a mix of parking downtown here. We have angle spaces, then we have some parallel spaces. So of each type that we looked at, we wanted to make sure that we provided that variety for the, the user. So in this case, what we on these angle spaces, we call them <clears throat> either right loaded or left loaded, meaning that the ramp is immediately to the, either the left side or the right side of the parking space. On the parallel spaces, uh, as, as somebody would come along and, and park kind of adjacent to the curb line, they're always on the right side. So you have this, we added a different variety to make sure that we, we're maximizing the, the accessibility and usability of the parking. Okay, and um, for example, in this uh, space that we're in, and I think um, all of the handicapped accessible spaces, uh, when I look at the uh, curb line here um, to our left, I notice that we have uh, sort of an angled ramp and a, um, basically a metal plate with some bumps on it. Um, can you explain how this works? Well, that's part of the requirement for, it's, it's called a, a tactile panel. It's a detectable warning panel, so somebody that might be visually impaired uh, can notice that there's a difference. You're, you're leaving a sidewalk area and you're coming either into a parking or a street area. So those are required under the, the ADA guidance, uh, and you'll see those detectable warning panels at all of our major crosswalks and major dri either street intersections or major driveway intersections. Okay, thanks. And so... Um, Obviously, uh, this handicapped space that we're standing in is right next to um, this angled ramp that goes up onto um, the sidewalk. I think these angled ramps are called tip downs. Um, and uh, um, so it makes it very convenient for someone who um, is handicapped to come pull into the space, um, get out of their vehicle with their wheelchair, whatever that might be, get up onto the sidewalk and um, you know essentially go about their business. That's correct. Okay. Cool. Um, also, one of the features of the new streetscape, we went from, uh, seems like a long time ago now, but from um, two lanes in each direction down to uh, one lane with a, a center turning um, median. And can you explain um, the sort of lane configuration here, the width of it, um, kind of how it's used and how it differs from the old Concord Main Street? Yeah, so the travel lanes that you typically see now, you, you see one lane in each direction, as you, you've explained. We have this six-foot cobblestone. We call it a traversable median. It's kind of a utility, utility area, functional area, but our travel lane widths are 15 feet. And that's what we call kind of this joint use or, or multi-use lane, uh, typically 10-foot for vehicle travel way, and then this five-foot shoulder, we sh you, you see these pavement markings, they're called sharrows. That's where, where bikes are, are really expected to be seen and, and use that space. So kind of a 15-foot multi-use before they were 10, 10 and a half foot lanes, very, very narrow, really, really struggle with uh, kind of the tightness, that, that friction, and you have a much more comfortable feel now with the travel way width. Okay, and also um, the... Uh Angled parking spaces, um, or the parking spaces in general, I think the technical name for them is stalls, right, or parking stalls. And to me, these seem to be, um, let's say, deeper um, than they were under the old uh, street configuration. Can you talk to us about that? Sure. There was a lot of debate about the, that, that parking stall depth piece. Um, and one of the things that we thought was very important before they were, you know, they averaged maybe 15 feet. So in some areas, that, that parking bay depth the depth, I mean, from curb line to the end of the pavement marking stripe was anywhere between 14 and 15. Very, very narrow vehicles. Most of the time were hanging over the back edge. In this case, we added 
two feet, a little better than two feet times. So our standard depth off of the curb line is now 17 feet. And as you drive through Main Street, most of the larger vehicles that used to overhang and really conflict with the travel way are now much more tucked in or so. So it's a much more comfortable feeling. People really feel it's, it's, it's a much better in, in, inviting feel to park downtown. And that's really what we, we needed to accomplish that to create better safety setback. Yeah, I think, um, you know, for those of us who've been uh, in downtown Concord for a long time have noticed that the um, sort of the, the look and feel uh, of the street feels much safer, um, much safer feeling to cross one lane of traffic in each direction on the crosswalks than trying to, you know, take your life in your hands and cross the uh, two lanes um, in, you know, in each direction. So um, I think those are uh, some nice improvements that we've made. I would add that one of those intangible things that's hard and difficult to measure when you go into a de design effort like we did is vehicle sound. You know, with the calming of the lanes, dropping the lane, uh, speeds are a little bit lower. That kind of that aggressive driver is kind of waved out of the out of the, the traffic stream now. It's much quieter. It's a really different feel now on, in terms of sound downtown, which which is what we want. We want people to feel comfortable down here, inviting, uh, and not listening to loud traffic all the time. Yeah, although it might not seem like that to folks at home right now because we're standing next to the construction zone um, across Pleasant Street. But uh, um, thanks, Ed. Thanks for your patience, Concord. It's all going to be worth it.